And you have to ask yourself, why is Umar getting these fights, man? He has wins over, I think, Brian Gonzalez, Sergey Morozov, and then Brian Kelleher. And let's not forget that Brian Kelleher fight, I believe, was at 145 pounds. It wasn't at 135. So you get a Nate Maness who is coming off of a beautiful, nasty second round TKO victory over Tony Gravely, our boy right there. You know what I mean? The dude who has fireworks in his hands, too. Wins over Luke Sand uh, Sanders and Johnny Mu uh, Munoz, man, and uh, Cameron Van Camp, right? So... That wasn't in the UFC, though. So three, he's 3-0. Three and oh. Nate Maness is 3-0 and oh in the UFC, though. There's been a little adversity. He's 3-0 and oh in the UFC. Umar is only 2-0 and oh in the UFC. But the question here, AJ, is why exactly are we not giving a step up for Umar Nurmagomedov? You know what I mean? Dude is a, on open, minus 700 favorite. Let me just take a quick look, AJ, at what the live odds are right now. Because currently, Umar Nurmagomedov is a minus 900 favorite favorite brother i don't understand what what are we doing here why are we have is it because his last name is Nurmagomedov? please explain to me what are we talking about i think they might just be giving him the slow route but honestly derek i don't know if nate uh nate manis manis however you say his last name excuse us but uh he's a, he's the real deal man he was hurt in that uh tony gravely fight and was able to come back so maybe it's because he had he, he looks a little chinny there's a thing where Manus, Manus however, uh, throws his jab, but he brings his right hand down. and uh, it, it could be something like that, but it could just also be that last name in Nurmagomedov, excuse me, because I feel like that's it just holds so much power in the press of the MMA world that it, it's, it's, it's almost undeniable, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the question is going to become here for Umar Nurmagomedov, man. Um, what is his best path to victory against Nate, Man uh, Nate Maness, Nate Maness? Sorry, because I, I don't know. I don't really don't know. But what do you think is the best path to victory, brother? Because if you look at his last five victories, four of them have come in by submission, all in the first and second round. Is he looking for the takedown? He does average what? almost eight takedowns a fight you know what i mean so is he looking for the takedown is he looking to throw some spinning shit and just go crazy just strike with nate manis like where, where are we going here what do you think is the most viable uh, path to victory because you know at this point it's not just about winning it's about winning in a beautiful dominant fashion for nurmagomedov um you have to do something spectacular especially when you're fighting these types of dudes however i do agree nate manis is not a dude who you should underlook or undercount it's not a dude who you're just saying oh this is just going to be a can i'm just going to roll over this is not like a michael venom page fight you feel me like so what are we talking about here? How does, how does he uh, go for his pack to victory? Yeah, I think uh, uh, Tony Gravely was able to, or thinking he had Nate Main as her, taking him a little easy, and next thing you know, you're looking at the stars. So mm. definitely not a, uh, a fighter to take lightly. And I also kind of, uh, so the, the question you phrase, how does, what's the most lucrative way for Umar Nurmagomedov to get this fight done? I think it has to be starting off on the feet, throwing those kicks, those question mark kicks, get, get, Main is thinking about another way and then shoot for that single leg, get him down to the ground, double leg, however you want to get it done, get Manus to the ground, ground and pound, smash season all day long. It, it, it's kind of how the storybook has been written for the Nurmagomedov line. Now the thing with Umar is he has better striking. He he is phenomenal with the legs. And I think on this one, man, he's going to try to prove that he also has hands. I, I think the ego might get a little uh, involved on this one because not only does he want to live up to the name of his cousin, but I think he wants mm -hmm. to surpass it. And how do you surpass that? Show everybody that not only can you smash season all day long, mm -hmm. but you can throw these hands as well. And I think that's kind of where I'm looking to see this fight going. I'm seeing I'm seeing fireworks, man. Anytime I see you know, Umar Nurmagomedov throwing those kicks as well as if you're if you know who Nate Manus is, this dude brings some heat to every single fight he does, and it leads to a little, you know, good and bad for him. So it, it, it can be a lot of fun right here. How do you see it going down? Well, listen, I, exactly how you said it, that's literally what he does, man. He has the ability to show off with the strike and get you thinking, oh, I'm concerned. I don't want to hit, get hit with a spinning back kick. Next thing you know, a hook kick, something, a wheel kick coming out of craziness. And his transition to take your back and choke you out is almost ridiculous. It's phenomenal. He has those. And once again, not the same, right? But I do truly believe that the Matoush Gamrot transitions off of his singles are so blazing quick, man. He's able to go from a single to your back in split seconds, and it should not be that easy. Umar can do the same thing man the problem is nate manis i mean he's probably coming in with a chip on his shoulder right here man he's probably coming in saying like oh you th i'm what plus 600 underdog okay yeah throw some money on me so we can really get this party started of course Umar Nurmagomedov has a major target on his back here, and anybody who gets a win over this dude is going to be elevated, skyrocketed, not only up the rankings necessarily, because, I mean, if you look at this, they this ranking right here, they had Umar at featherweight. They didn't have a current at bantamweight, so he should be much higher than that. But ultimately, I just think that uh, this is... 
this is truly Nurmagomedov's fight to lose right here. And it just, this is like one of those where it's like not how does he win, but like in what, how stunning of a fashion does he win? I hate saying it like that because you never want to discount any fighter, but I think Umar Nurmagomedov does probably go the grappling route to finish this thing off because I think Maynus has the best path to victory on the feet. I think that's the way he gets it done. Crowd the kicks. Uh, don't let the kicker kick anymore. You know what I mean? Get him dice and dirty, dirty boxing, and just uh, get him out of his rhythm, out of his style. But when we're talking props, this is the crazy thing, AJ. The crazy thing is that he's currently a minus 900 favorite for Nurmagomedov, but the even crazier thing is that if you look at his props, a for Nurmagomedov, let's see. So we have plus 175 for a decision, plus 100 for a submission, and plus 500 for a TKO. So I thought it was really interesting. Plus 100 for a submission, man. That's even better props than Tiago Moises. That means they're like, yeah, submission, probably the way to go. And I agree, man, because uh, you look at his last five, brother, and it's, it speaks for itself. So what do you like out of those ones, man? Yeah, I like that submission. That's where, I was, that's where my mind was at all the time, because if you watch all of uh, Umar's fights... He'll hit you, he'll hurt you, and then he'll to- he'll tap you out. So yeah. it's kind of kind of how it goes. <laughs> I think it's the best way. There's a reason we rarely see something like plus 100 for a submission. It's usually something around the two, three. Not that surprising for Umar, man. Yeah, and I basically feel the same way. I do think Manus is going to try to make this uh, much more competitive than people are seeing it out to be right now. But I mean, Umar, bro, he's the real deal. The problem is, is he has he's shorter and he has a reach disadvantage. But like you said, he does the majority of his work with his legs. So the legs are longer than the arms. So does that really matter? Not necessarily. Uh, he's probably the better grappler, the better striker. That's the whole problem here. But Nate Manus has something that nobody can teach, which is heart, determination, hustle. And uh, we'll see how big of a factor that plays into it. I hope this is much more competitive than the odds indicate. But I like Umar Nurmagomedov via submission, plus 100 on that prop. Over and under is one and a half rounds, whether you're going over or under. Over, under, one and a half. I'm going to take the over on this one. Yeah. I think Manus will give him a little harder of a fight. And we can't forget, I don't, I don't think we've said it yet, Manus has some serious power in yeah. both hands. Absolutely. Whatever hand is his rear hand, you got to watch out because he's going to hurt you with either one. Um, I'm taking the over. I think it's going to be a little harder of a fight than, the, than a quick finish. What about you? Me too. I'll take the over too, but I would not be surprised if something quick happened. And don't be surprised if Nate Manus does land a sneaky little, like in the eye, in the words of um, the Count Michael Bisping, a cheeky little counter, you know what I'm saying, that uh, stuns Umar Nurmagomedov. You, bro, I'm not counting out Nate Manus at all. I just think that the smart play when money is on the line, give it to Nurmagomedov. You don't become a minus 900 favorite for no reason. <laughs>